Hey everybody, Dr. Kevin Hyde here with Pinellas Anxiety Specialists. It's day 19 of the 30 days of live videos, and today I want to talk about excessive fears or phobias. So you might have heard of phobias before, and from things like arachnophobia, which is the fear of spiders. Um, there's other things like misophobia, which is the fear of heights. Um, and of course there's you know, all those technical terms, Latin terms, for all sorts of different fears. But these phobias or fears can really develop around anything. You know, some things are more common than others, like fear of heights is pretty common, fear of flying um, is pretty common. And then things like spiders and snakes and other you know, creatures like that, um, which, you know, thinking about evolution, which have been a threat to our survival, those things uh, are pretty easy to create phobias around. And now just having a little bit of a fear of, you know, snakes or just not liking flying, um, that's not really a problem. The problem is when the fears become excessive and they're you know, controlling your life in the way that you, you don't really want to do them and you avoid doing those things because of it. That's when we want to think about you know, doing something to try and help. Um, so for example, there's somebody that I had worked with in the past who um, just did not want to drive on highways. You know, she'd never had a problem before, but for some reason, she developed this fear of driving on highways. And she would go you know, 20 or 30 minutes out of her way because she did not want to get on the highway when the highway would have you know, been a five or 10 minute trip. Instead, it was taking her like 30 minutes to get someplace uh, in town. And so that was really affecting her life, um, cutting into time with family, making her late to things that she wanted to be at. And so it was really impacting her. And so when you're in a situation like that, um, just know that there are things that we can do to try and help. And, you know, of course, when you see this on you know, movies and TV shows, what they do for someone who's scared of heights, they'll take them and they'll do like, uh, make them do a skydiving or something like that, which that is a form of exposure. Um, but that's called flooding, which is, you know, can be really scary uh, for somebody that has these phobias and fears. Um, and it can be helpful you know, when it's done in a therapeutic way. But it also makes you go through uh, that really uncomfortable feeling. So exposure is one way that we can work on these fears. And now we don't usually go to the worst thing. What we'll do is we create a list, we call it a hierarchy, um, of those fears. And you go from really, really scary to things that are a little bit scary to things that are not scary at all. And then we find some place on that list to start with. So for example, for somebody who has a phobia of spiders, we might just look at a picture of a spider. And so there's a little discomfort, but they're not overwhelmed with it. And so once they get used to that, then we kind of work our way up to doing that, that high level exposure. And it's not nearly as uncomfortable as it would be in the beginning because we've already knocked out all those things that are lower on the list. Um, so when you think about it, with, this, with these phobias, what happens is we get this significant anxiety, but our body is not designed to have that anxiety forever. We just we can't be afraid forever because the anxiety has a purpose, which is to allow us to survive, right? It prepares you to escape from a dangerous situation. But with these phobias, you're not usually in a dangerous situation and your body needs to learn that. So when you expose yourself to that fear and you stay in that situation without escaping, your body and your mind begin to learn that this is not actually dangerous that it's okay, I can be here, I don't need to do anything. And over time, that anxiety comes down and gets lower. And the next time you're in that situation, the anxiety doesn't go as high and doesn't last as long. And so that's why exposure works because your mind and your body are learning that those things are not dangerous. And so that's what we want to do is expose you to it. And so the other way that we can handle these phobias is by doing systematic desensitization. And a lot of people like to choose this method because uh, you don't have to experience the anxiety while we're going through this process. Um, but it does take longer and it's not quite as effective as the exposure. And so for this, we get really good at making you completely relaxed. And then we create that same hierarchy like we would the other uh, for you know, full on exposure. And while we're having you really relaxed, we start at the very bottom of the list. And imagine that you are in whatever that lowest situation is. And we do that a few times. I mean, then slowly work our way up to the top. Um, and the hope is that you would not feel any anxiety at all throughout that process. And so, again, some people prefer that because, you know, they're not having to feel that anxiety. But like I said, it, it does take a while to work through that whole list. And um, 
studies have found that it's not quite as effective as actually exposing yourself to the situation and having your, your brain and your body learn that it's not dangerous. So if you're having any of those excessive fears or phobias, I'd encourage you to reach out. We can talk about it and see what the, the best path forward is for you, because there are options. You don't need to be stuck feeling that way forever. So you know, please reach out. Let's talk. Uh, if you have any ideas for things you want me to cover in the next you know, week and a half, please leave a, a comment below. Shoot me a message, whatever is easiest for you. And I uh, hope you guys have a good evening. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.